This week in the restroom, we get our Frozen on to flush a fairy tale prequel sequel turd from 2016. We've got endless backstory, perfume ad acting, absentee lead characters, discount Thor, and actress Jessica Chastain sporting an Irish accent so bad, she makes the Irish spring guy sound like Lucky the Leprechaun. It's The Huntsman, Winter's War. And before we flush it, we're gonna take it out and play with it a little. We're here to flush it, so you don't have to see it. Greetings, everyone. I am Honor Knight, your head cinematic flusher, right here in the restroom. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-cinematic flushers, Midwest movie mogul, Colleen Griffin. Hey, hey, hey. And sassy cinephile, Sarah Poulton. Hi. Our special guest this time out previously assisted with the flushing of Herbie, fully loaded, back in episode 167. She's one half of the non-animal expert team from the Varmints podcast. Varmints is an educational comedy show that covers all types of critters that creep, crawl, slither, fly, hop, or swim on this big blue planet of ours. You can check out all the animal action over at BlazingCaribouStudios.com. Link in the show notes. Please welcome back the lovely and talented Donna Lee Hume. Hello. I'm also one half of a new podcast now called the Soapy Madams Podcast, which is a podcast about British and American soap operas. So, oh, sweet! And uh, the contrast of the two. So, if you enjoy that, please do turn it, tune in. My co-host is worth every second. Pimping one show is not enough, is it, Donna? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. So not gotta, for this. Not right. for this turd. God sorry. Blew my whole goddamn intro. I was. <laughs> all right, there you go, folks. You can you can check that out too, and uh, we'll recap that at the end. Let's kick off this flush with a round of Thunder Dump. Blow some ass. I'll put 60 seconds on the restroom clock, and we're going to go around the cinematic bowl to see who has the worst alternate title for this week's cinematic turd. The loser will then get to read the RSS, that's restroom stall stats, in a funny voice of my choosing. Here we go. Griff. A song of ice and fire crotch. No, Polton. Snow white people. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Donna... In a world where you <laughs> thought it would be worth it for the eye candy. I had a game of Thor for dummies. <laughs> Griffin! Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's got the worst accent? Of the world? <laughs> Pol- Bolton! Uh, Huntsman and the Winter War is coming. Ooh, wow, two bombs right there. Adana? Uh, what are we doing? Your next title. I know that that was it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice going, Donna. All right, I had uh, the Huntsman, Winter's Poop. You're supposed to have more than one, Donna. Jesus I Christ. Have, Griffin! What force four. trauma? Yeah. <laughs> no, I missed mean, that was my title. Oh, what are we doing was my title. Oh, that was your title? Ah, uh, shit. All right, uh, Polton? The Devil Wears Pastel Blue. No, oh, wow, three in a row for you. I had Frozen 2, Burning Down the Crib. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Uh, Griffin? Huntsman, Furiosa versus Thor. No, Polton! <laughs> Iced Ice Baby. <laughs> <laughs> and that is time. That is time. We'll end it on that one. All right. Very uneven around a Thunder Dump post Scary Turds Month. Uh, not bad job all around. Unfortunately, Miss Poulton had, uh, wow, three in a row before she, she kind of she almost saved it at the end. Almost, but not quite. Not enough to. Uh, not enough I had to... two more. No, no, and it's too late. We're done. <laughs> That's it. That was time. Did you hear the buzzer? You got to listen for the buzzer. Sarah Poulton gets to read the RSS rest from Stall Sats this week. She'll do it in the voice of an evil queen. Have at it. I'm just using my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> At your discretion, dear. All right. The Huntsman Winter's War is a 2016 American fantasy-based film based on the characters from the Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen. Both the prequel and the sequel to Snow White, The Huntsman. The film takes place before and after the events of the first film is written by Craig Mazin and Evan and is the directorial debut I know that guy, I went to high school with that guy who acted for visual effects the supervisor on his first film and we can tell the cast includes Chris Henwork, Charlie Theron Nick Frost, Emily Brunt and Jessica Chastain the film was released in April 
and was generally received negative reviews from critics and was a box office disappointment, unlike my queendom. Grossing just $165 million worldwide against a $115 million budget on Rotten Tomatoes. The film has a rating of 17% based on 190 reviews. The site's consensus reads, The Huntsman, Winter's War, is visually arresting and boasts a stellar cast, but neither are enough to recommend... Uh, I can't talk. <laughs> neither are enough to recommend the sequel entirely, unnecessarily sequel. I don't know what that sentence was. I didn't say it right. Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul, no, I said the I funny voice was... Literate. I know, I said the funny voice was an evil queen, not a sex phone operator. And now... <laughs> Uh, no, I, no. You hit three. That's the voice you no, get. No, I, <laughs> you call no, me. It was an evil queen who's divorced and down her luck. Okay, all right, great job, I guess. Oh, and in fact, about screenwriter Craig Mazin, uh, his freshman year roommate in college was Ted Cruz. Oh, all right. Well, that's there. You go. There's your political point this week. Boy, if you like your Snow White sequels jam packed with backstory that doesn't include Snow White, <laughs> we got the cinematic turd for you. Holy shit. Man, I haven't seen a fairy tale film this bad since. The Sorcerer's Apprentice, Mirror Mirror, Hook, Maleficent, Jack the Giant Slayer, The Brothers Grimm, Alice in Wonderland, Red Riding Hood, Beastly, Pinocchio, Pretty Woman, and Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters. Woo! You're going well, you're gonna to compare this to Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters? Oh, well, it's, it's a fairy than. tale. It's a fairy tale movie, yeah. I wonder if uh, Cribs Hemsworth also had an affair with the director while shooting this turd. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> not, not, the same, not the same director. I have a lot of questions. Yeah. What does the mirror show you? I said, wait, is that that's a mirror? For a moment I thought I was looking at a latex condom wrapper from a vending machine. I saw that at home good. Is it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, for real. The huntsman for all your Trojan brand condom needs. Or, or it looks like a prop that was left over from an eighties music video. It's a terrible looking mirror, guys. It's it's the same one from the first movie anybody remembers. It's this big gold looking thing, but it's it's basically a big condom wrapper. An off told tale of Snow White. In case you need a recap of the first Huntsman film where Snow White was the lead. Uh, just keep watching that condom rapper, folks. Kristen Stewart's bare is one one shot of her, uh, and that's it for the movie, basically. So don't it, no, it's so obviously a double. No, in that an opening in the mirror, yes, it was. Uh, later on, I don't think it's so. not. No, in the mirror, no, yes. she was shot from behind. No, yeah, that was that's later. That's no, I'm mm. talking in the mirror here in this beginning. It was. Oh, her. you a, mean like previous? Uh, that's what I'm talking. Like the, the end, her and end. Yeah, when you're yeah. looking through the mirror, it's her. But there is another tale you have not yet seen. Uh, one that has nothing to do with Snow White. But only because she banged the director and was too embarrassed to return for this crappy sequel. <laughs> really? Is that why they didn't put her uh, in? Uh, no, I think there was other That's reasons uh, why, but I think that... It was a factor. It was a factor, <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, no, I was oh, a bit... Oh, Yeah, that, total that, that, bullshit. That did put a dent in her career. Um, that was a big mess. Because the guy was married at the time. Um, yeah, but yeah. at least yeah. it was a dent in his career as well. Yes, yeah, he didn't return either, so we got yeah, no, no, he returned to do Ghost in the Shell. Oh, that's right, oh, yeah, bummer. which you probably yeah, yeah, yeah we, and, and we've already so talked about that, he's, folks. He's mm -hmm. knocking it out of the park. A humble, a humble pawn can bring down kingdoms, uh, even while wearing a cheap Halloween store wig. Jesus Christ, I haven't seen a wig this bad on Charlize Theron since Aeon Flux. Another bad oh. wig. I'm sick the of this. Wig, it, it, really it bad in this one. Oh, it's a hundred. I mean, yeah, you feel like the wig is like attached to the crown. <laughs> $150 million, folks, and you can't get that right. She looks. She walks her. into every scene like that perfume commercial. Oh, like, well, on. yeah, I know. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple, of, a couple of things like that. The first section of this movie is a prequel to the other film, Snow White and the Huntsman. Well, it's so, a prequel to end all sequels. Well, that, <laughs> but I'm bummed. Charlize Theron is, uh, of course, is alive and well, and she's sitting at this uh, chess table um, across from this uh, very old guy, uh, basically Mel Gibson, who's about to. Actually, John Stewart. <laughs> Looks like John Stewart with a beard. Um, <laughs> and you thought this was just a game. A Game of Thrones, goddammit! Theron drops all of her dialogue like she's in a Funny or Die parody video. All of her <laughs> lines, she did not yeah. want to be there. All of her line readings are fucking terrible. And she's only in the very beginning, folks, in this section with the stupid-ass wig, and then there's another wig and a crown, and then she'll be at the back end of the movie. No, we don't give away spoilers, but there you go. <laughs> she took her kingdom as she would before, and as she would again, uh, by sexually harassing other kings over a game of chess until they had a stroke. Eh, that works. Okay, so basically, uh, oh yeah, she was sexually harassing. She did, and the guy, uh, the poor um, uh, John oh, Stewart. That's right. The, the, that's right. Yeah, I know. John Stewart has a heart attack at the chess table there and dies, and that's the end of him. So basically, she claims another kingdom, but she has a sister, as we're going to uh, come to find out. Learn from loss, Freya, and your day will come. 
And that day is when you have to wear a crown on your head that looks like you're trying to uh, signal life on another planet. <laughs> the five-minute <laughs> mark. Um, again, $115 million budget or $115 budget. <laughs> depending on your it, it looks like, point like of view. you went you went to like a factory and they like had the defect materials and they made them into crowns you may be surprised how things turn out i know i'm surprised at how many halloween store masks were purchased for this production why do i say mask i don't know emily blunt looks like she was just released from the psych ward just prior to filming uh, i meant to say wigs Ugh. and i guess i was just in a halloween mood folks uh post uh scary well, we'll get to the mask later uh, on. well yeah we'll get to the mask but she's got a crappy wig too so I oh yeah, this is even worse. I, <laughs> like all, all wigs, Can't like they just dye their like, hair. I don't understand why. I, yeah, I mean, could they not have like said to like the Real Housewives, "Can we borrow some of your wigs?" <laughs> yeah, Kim Zolciak got plenty of wigs for the borrow girl. Go right, go Zolciak, get your ass to Atlanta. I thought, yeah, I thought that was like too. Specific. Well, if you even look at the wigs in Lord of the Rings in the '90s, they were better quality than what oh, they had. Oh yeah, the Lord of the Rings yeah, wigs. Yeah, and the money go. They're beautiful wigs in the Lord of the Rings. And oh, they're the, fantastic. The pro- you have to get the best wigs, and you have to take the time to apply them. It's like they've got to be in the makeup trailer for quite a while if you want to make it work. And they didn't commit. They were like, it's good enough. <laughs> co- your average cosplayer does more work on uh, their stuff right. than these guys did. I You're would so like right. To be a wig lobbyist for Hollywood. We understand they're expensive, but you guys have a hundred and fifty million dollars. You budget. can afford an eight thousand yeah. dollar wig. It's like learn from Beyonce's example. <laughs> so we learn from this opening scene between Frey that Frey is in love with a, a guy that uh, is, is was married to somebody else, of course, and she's pregnant with uh, this guy's baby. Um, well, she didn't even know she was pregnant. No, until, uh, what's her name, that Theron just conceded to her gut. And uh, just gave her, oh, she gave her, like, a, not a pap smear. What was that? A pap a, 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 <laughs> she, she, gave, she gave her an ultrasound with yeah, her eyes. Yeah, 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 there you go. ultrasounding her with her eyes. Yeah, there is ultrasound with the eyes. So there you go, and found out she was pregnant. Uh, not, and not a pap smear, folks. I'm, and again, I'm not a medical well, doctor. Oh, boy, but, honor. Oh God. Yeah, I know, it's a big difference, I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, uh, ultrasounding with her eyes. Uh, I had no calling Doctor Knight. I, I had <laughs> I had no choice, and I, neither did the audience. in having to watch someone come in infant side uh, less than ten minutes in this fairy tale turn. Infanticide. I thought this only happens in poor neighborhoods. Ooh, bad tag on the oh, end of that, well, but that yeah, <laughs> that really is there horrible. But but, like, no, <laughs> but that is white. But this is a thing. well, yeah, well, yes. No, but infanticide it, is like the least scary thing in most fairy tales. Uh, so that didn't, really? Didn't oh, yeah. It's like literally this movie starts uh, with a baby being burned alive. So yep. in case you're wondering, folks, it's not infant so It's an average fairy tale, you know? Yeah. It's I mean, inf- have you read the Grimm Brothers? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, I know, yeah. I know. It's like yeah. exactly the most loyal, like, or any German fairy tale. It's yeah, still... like that's the least disturbing part that you're gonna see. <laughs> I don't know. It's, well, I didn't. I, I, it really didn't sit well with me. But uh, all right, there you go. I guess I was the only one offended by that. Uh, consumed by grief and anger, Freya left her kingdom for one of her own in the far north, uh, where she'll hopefully be able to get over this uh, baby's death and uh, let it go. Get it? Get it? I knew oh, you were making a frozen joke. Come on. Well, uh, there's a lot of frozen jokes. This is the same character. It's the Ice Queen. The frozen chick well, was like she... an angsty teenager. This was one dealing with like not dealing with her shit. Well, Griffin, I think if she yeah. just took if she just took a healthy shit and then sung some musical numbers, she would have been fine in this film. But... Probably. I feel yeah, like same. you're both well, right. Well, she's gonna do that in the new Mary Poppins movie. Okay? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, she will. She will come back. Yeah, Emily Blunt will, Blunt will be singing or Brunt is a. Uh... Poulton said in the stats, and she butchered that. Said, oh, whatever. Oh, well, it, yeah, it did seem like a little bit of a non sequitur to me. Like, I can't have a child. I guess I'll raise an army and conquer the world. <laughs> yeah, I know. She could not raise a child. Then in this place, she would raise an army, uh, which makes total sense, as Donna just it said. Was, unless there'd be a lot of army out there. Well, which, <laughs> well, I'd say it makes total sense, unless. Sure. Unless you're on food stamps, because uh, armies no, are no, crazy no, okay, expensive. Stop it with the food stamps, because no, she turned she turned a prosperous place into a third world country. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I'm like burning all your fields so you can <laughs> make a kingdom of ice is like and, with, well, uh, and child soldiers. She turned a first world country into a third world country. Oh, we don't need any farmlands when we have an army. <laughs> I was not the exact same. Thing. I was like, uh, so what? how are you? Feeding your army. They eat magic for breakfast. <laughs> uh, that, yes, yes, they do, Don. <laughs> there, uh, she built her fortress and ruled as the Ice Queen, just like Martha Stewart. <laughs> That's true. I, it's, yeah, it's somewhat relevant and dated. I couldn't figure out which way to go on that, folks. 
Tell me your name. If this token black kid had busted out with LaShawn around the 12 minute mark, I would have given this ice little oh, turd a thumbs up. Why? Uh, why? Because <laughs> so, he's the only me. black guy in the movie. He's, dude, he's, dude, you're all already right, that was, trying to make this like I know that your queen. <laughs> Maybe that's it, Misty. Well, for Ice Queen. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, you're already trying to make this like. Well, she took a poor no, neighborhood and she made it poor. I don't understand why. She... Well, you can look at it in that respect. I just thought it was funny just because he's the only um, African American. No, you were film. saying stuff about like welfare and blah, blah, blah. Well, well I know it all kind of ties in together, but what I'm saying is like he's of the entire fantasy world. He's the only black guy on the whole world. That doesn't even make any sense. And she put like the mark of the Urukai on his face. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that, yeah, she singles out him. I know, Donna goes uh, for, for L -O -T -R -D. having feelings. Nice going, Donna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'll become my elite, my huntsman, uh, because there's nothing more exciting than watching kids beat the crap out of each other for the next several minutes like they're auditioning for a medieval times show. Uh, I should have said dinner show. I only kind of butchered that end of it. But that's what happens, folks. So basically, she uh, burns the fields that we just talked about. And she's raising, she brings, she kidnaps all these kids, healthy kids from the rest of the world, and brings them up to the far north. You know, this guy's, it's fucking cold up there. Nobody's wearing heavy coats. Everybody's yeah. just in leather and tunics and shit like that. I'm, let me tell you, man, I, it's, I get a little chill. I'm putting on a fleece. I can't imagine living up there in the frozen tundra, right? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, with the Ice Queen. I didn't understand that either. But apparently, it was really warm wherever they were filming. And they just had to kind of fudge it. Um, but then she wants to turn these kids into soldiers. And two of the small kids are going to be uh, on the Chris Hemsworth character, which we're going to talk about in this other, this other chick we don't even want to mention yet. Uh, guard, the boy and the girl. What are their names? Who? Why does Emily Blunt constantly look like she's appearing in a Sephora ad? <laughs> That's what she's wearing. I, I, I think I saw her at the mall. Yeah, but she's wearing that stupid mask, that owl mask. That makes oh, it... oh, oh. I, I do have trivia for that. That was actually 3D printed. What? Ooh, really? Like her crown, her crown and her mask were 3D printed. And it was like one of the first times like 3D printing was used like what? significantly for a costume. That's cool. So, so Don, in case and you're anyway, wondering. I that, love Emily uh, Blunt. She can't. Well, I, I, I like her she, in she other stuff. I don't like her here. Um, also, Donna, in case you're wondering where that 100, 150 her. million I went. She I did, too. I thought she did a pretty no. good job. I thought she, like, she didn't want to be there. And she's you can tell. literally numb from what she. From the waist like, down? You know, she is the queen of PTSD. <laughs> yeah, because I the script is so flat. bad. I thought she was terribly miscast. The script miscast. was yeah. so bad no, that, you know, she, she didn't have much to work with. I don't think she was miscast I at all. Just... She was supposed to be, like, numb yet angry. Yeah. I don't think she, well, I don't think she pulled it I don't off. think she, she did very well. I, I think she could have amped it up. I don't know. She held back. It was, like, too subtle. Yeah, she didn't have, yeah. like, the stage presence to really fear her. I mean, I did feel like she was doing her best to, like, be an ice queen, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, not any well, emotions. And I, and, all right. Yeah, well, and, I, and, well, an ice queen who is an ice queen because of PTSD. I sure. felt this was a clumsy metaphor for PTSD. Uh, <laughs> did, did, I, I love did I... Did I scare you? <laughs> no, but you sure scared us, Jessica Chastain, who sports an Irish accent. It sounds like she must have picked it up from a no. local Bennigan's. 16 no, minimum. it's Irish and Scottish, and I oh, don't know. I don't know. I kept waiting for <laughs> yeah. her. I kept waiting for her to take my drink order. Oh, Jesus boy. Christ, guys! This is a, a celebrated actress. Now talk about somebody's miscast. Educated. She is you, terrible like, in this. Multiple Oscar nominations, and what the fuck? She, there's no excuse for her to be sounding like this, unless they, the dialect coach didn't show up for the entire shoot. But anyway, she plays the adult version. Of the, uh, these two kids hit it off kind of when they're beating the shit out of each other. One of them turns out to be Jessica Chastain as an adult. The other, of course, is Thor. We're going to get to him. Uh, but anyway, uh, she has this terrible Irish slash Scottish slash brogue accent. Every time she opened her mouth, I tried to say what she said, and I started laughing. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. It's just so <laughs> Me too. I just kept thinking yes. of, like, a, I kept thinking of Chris O'Dowd from the IT crowd. <laughs> it's just this heavy accent. Oh, my it's God. Just I'm terrible. Of Chris O'Dowd from um, Miss Peregrine's uh, oh, yeah, yeah, For yeah, Peculiar yeah, Children yeah. when he tried to do an American accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. It's absolutely terrible accent. We'll, we're going to talk more about that. Battle after battle, they return victorious, uh, none of which we're going to get to see because the production couldn't afford it. So we're just going to people on horses. And how and is that possible? You're talking about a bunch of kids with leather jackets <laughs> with bows and arrows. There's no possible way that they're conquering any army, let alone well, every army. Do you think, like, small braids were the equivalent of Candy Crush? <laughs> <back> <laughs> They didn't have anything to do. Like yeah. they, they just did smart small phones. braids. Yeah. Small so braids. they just like made small braids in their hair. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. I think it wanted to be the Hunger Games, but it just didn't. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Don't even. Come on. Don't. Let's. All right. Uh, I'm marrying you uh, in a hot spring because uh, when you need a bone in the frozen north, you bone in a oh hot spring. Oh, my God. Spring. Um, and so we just tried to escape with wet hair. This kid's <laughs> style is jump out at him with a knife, then make out. Then right. be like, we're getting married. That's how you do and it. I like it. Yeah, you like, I that? like that? Okay. That, well, you yeah, got to so be in a hot the tub, sequel, though. The basic instinct that we needed. Love conquers all, or so I've heard. Uh, now for Jessica Chastain's character, who seemingly... Okay, uh, but can hold we on, talk about get... how they both have Hang on. wet hair? I, I, they I, were going to escape right. with yeah, wet hair. Yes, and before they can do that, uh, Miss Emily Blunt finds out that they are in love and trying to escape. She throws up an ice wall between the two and tells them, you know, just go if you want to go. Um separating him and then he sees her well there you go love conquers all or so i've heard now for jessica chastain's character who's seemingly put that in air quotes killed only 25 minutes into the running time at least we don't have to endure her god-awful accent for a while and i put well, that in quotes and there was too. that like uh, convenient like decorative pool yeah. running between them so she could make that wall of ice yes and uh, so he sees her get killed and he decides to flee no actually he doesn't flee he gets his head knocked in and they throw him into a frozen river we're gonna talk about that in a second um to come back uh, later in. So that's the end of the prequel, folks. We're at, uh, here you go, seven years later, where we finally, I put that in caps, uh, get to the main storyline after a full 27 minutes of backstory that could have probably be told in two minutes. This is the equivalent of a stripper charging while she takes a shit, applies Vagisil, and touches up her makeup before giving you a lap dance. So <laughs> Yeah, you know what? My notes were essentially the same as yours. I was like, I was like, 27 exactly minutes same. in, right. some evil cannot be vanquished. <laughs> Because, honestly, like, we're three quarters through a big movie right now already. Well, we're 27 minutes. We're one quarter. Just the way it felt. It was like, I'm at 27 minutes, and I feel like I should be near the end now. And yeah. this has been a kind of a big story, and it's not over yet? What do you mean it's All not right, over yet? All right, so just aside from the stripper I stuff. I did like yeah. the... I do like the crazy little ice owl, though. What they really need to recap was how Thor survived after being thrown unconscious into that chilly river. But no, they don't, they escape right over that. And if, just for folks keeping track who have seen the first movie, uh, this takes place now we're after the first movie. I'm his brother, a well, half-brother. Uh, does anyone even remember these two idiot dwarfs from the first film? Nick Frost looks yes. like he just finished up a round of midget tossing in an English pub. Were there no dwarven actors available for these roles so they have to squash these two full-sized actors using Adobe After Effects? They look terrible. They look Peter terrible. Peter Dinklage probably sent them an email that said, no, I, no. well, I yeah. didn't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Really? You don't, Diana, come on. They, no, they could have got actual no, dwarves to do that. fantasy dwarves are not like human people with dwarfism. Right. Fantasy dwarves look like Gimli. They look yeah. like full-size human, big, wide, big men. And they have thick arms and burly chests and tiny little Why short, not? stubby legs. And they don't look like. You know, I don't agree. We just we just watched well, exactly. the film where we had a guy just CGI faces on. Well, no, it looks little... yeah, right. They shouldn't have done it. But Griffin, we just flushed the film where we had a, a larger midget that could have done well, that. Like then we have that. That's, what I'm, yeah. that's, that's what, what I'm saying though, that. is that human dwarfism doesn't look right. If you're a fantasy nerd, you kind of understand what I'm no, talking no, about. No, like... I'm a fantasy nerd. I get. I no, understand no, no, what you're no, saying, I, but I, I, I just think that. The... And I feel like the like the Lord of the Rings thing handled it. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot better. Oh yeah, a lot better didn't make it seem like they were no. deformed or anything. No, these guys look just don't look really, special effects wise, they don't look right is what I'm saying. No, but it, it was so gross that the, like people you know were in other things were just CGI'd onto other actors' I know. body. Poor, poor Nick Frost. I, well, I don't say poor Nick, he took the work, but, he, but he's got a mohawk. He looks like a fucking idiot. I'm sorry. That And the other guy is really creepy looking too. They don't look, I don't think they look, I don't remember, I don't even remember them from the first movie and I, they're they're less effective here I think. But, I, f you know. I felt like their costumes weren't super but also I wasn't, you know, I wasn't offended that they're not like little people because yeah, see, dwarves are not little people. Oh, I, so. Yes, yeah, I, I know yeah, dwarves, dwarves are like the, like the ones yeah. in Willow. They're the Nell ones or whatever that shit. Yeah, show. well I liked the girls. The girls uh, we'll talk good. about them. They're coming. The girls are but, better. The girls are better. But, yeah. uh, but I think the I girls... loved her little kilt that she was wearing. The one oh, boy. All she right. was. All right. I did really like that. Right. I thought that was cool. All right, so we got these two guys that are squashed down in the, in the dwarves, and they don't look right. But right. Snow White thinks uh, anyway. They end up meeting up because Thor's enlisted by the king to not by really by the queen. Uh, fucking Snow White, who tells him she's got to get the the mirrors on the loose, and she's he's got to he, they enlist him to go find the mirror, and apparently these two dwarves are going to help out doing it. Snow White thinks I can find it. Sure, we'll talk around the lead character from the first film without having to deal with her directly for this crappy uh, prequel sequel. Makes sense, 30-minute mark. So in case you're wondering about Snow White, folks, you do get one shot of a, uh, somebody subbing in for Kristen Stewart in one scene of her crying in front of the stupid uh, condom wrapper. 
And then that's, mm-hmm. the, that's the end of that. And then that's all you see. So we, we're going to talk about Snow White, but we're not going to actually have her in the movie, which, which doesn't, this is bonkers. I don't even understand why they even bothered making the film. Like you've done the first one. Why wouldn't you just logically continue it? Even if you had to get another actress to do Snow White, who gives a shit about Kristen Stewart? She wasn't even that damn good in the first one. You could have got anybody to do the second one. I thought Chris Hemsworth was the standout in that movie. Yeah, but they made the whole film just based on his character. He was a supporting character in the first movie. He might have been the standout, but... Just, no, it was actually all about his story arc, right. not hers. All right, well... I agree. All right. well, then what it didn't make should've... any sense. Why this universe? Just write another story where Chris Hemsworth is right. basically the same character. I, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I agree with, with Honor. Like, it's a Snow White story without Snow White. I mean, how can you have... Yeah. It's like having a Superman story without Superman. Superman. Which way they... Which way they just... They're going to try to do for most of Justice League coming up. Oh, well, but, nerds, that's, but that's what I said. Yeah. I but said that's a Justice was... League story, though. You know what I mean? Like... No, I, I said it was like a Snow yeah. White story about the Huntsman. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you're right, right. I, I so totally it's like Clark Kent's you. weird co-worker but this on, is... like, an accounting. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, all right. And, like, but this is... <laughs> It's like a yeah. freaking sidekick story. I, that's it's the weird. other. Yes, it's like just like the Pirates of the Caribbean. When you when you well, make no, a support... or, or no, it's no more appropriately, it's like the Lone Ranger. Oh, they oh try yes, to make it more yeah, about Tonto, Tonto. You're absolutely than right. The Lone yeah. Ranger. All right, so we're learning a lot of lessons here, folks. Folks, hey, filmmakers, stop making supporting characters lead characters in sequels. That's what we're saying. Stop doing it. Uh, the mirror was here. Duh. The circular scorch mark on the ground kind of gives it away. Thor. Uh, either that or a very small UFO landed there which might have actually made for a more entertaining film, the 36-minute mark. So Thor is hired to go out and track where the mirror is going. Somebody's got the mirror. They're on the run uh, after it, I should say. And they got the, and the two little uh, guys are squashed down. They're, they're coming with them. So it's a, it's a threesome right now. It's going to be a foursome later on. Not what you think. Uh, have you ever seen? Okay. All right, Donna. Uh, have you have you ever seen? Well, I gotta I gotta gotta get it in where I can, honey. Uh, have you have, have you? See, I, what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna can Donna's laughter, and then every time my joke fails, I'm just gonna sub that laughter in, and then my show is gonna be money. I just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> yeah, not that it was funny. She just wasn't expecting it. It uh, was funny, that, but I wasn't expecting it as you, well. That's how you work, folks. Uh, have you ever seen a female dwarf? Horrifying. Uh, that's what I wrote. This film is dwarfist. But I'm bump. Hey, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yes. Too. So anyway, apparently the, the male dwarves, who are not really dwarves, are offended by having to look at a female. There's a they go into a uh, they go in that tavern that you know if you've seen the Lord of the Rings beginning tavern, same shit. They go into a tavern and they uh, to get a drink at night and they're looking for information mm-hmm. about where the this stupid who's got the mirror and where it's going. And uh, then the, these guys bust in. And he says, "You call yourself a huntsman?" Uh, that's why I said, "Well, he's more of a Thor, really." And as a result, there's a big fight that ensues, and it's a terribly choreographed. It's a fight you've seen in a bar a million times, and it takes out outside, and they beat the shit out of Thor, and they're gonna kill him. Uh, but just before they can kill him, somebody well, somebody steps in. Well, and, but, um, can I say uh, these uh, fights were shot like way too tight? Yeah. They needed to expand it so you could see like the whole fight. Yeah, you gotta back up. Um, his wife's dead. Uh, we can only hope, and yet here's uh, Jessica Chastain and her crappy Irish accent or Scottish or whatever she's got showing up again. Alive and well, guys, around the 42-minute mark. We didn't get rid of her for long, but apparently mm-hmm. she did survive being killed, uh, seemingly killed at the beginning of the film. Uh, anyway, she saves his life, and then uh, she thinks that he abandoned her, and then she, he thinks that she got killed, and they start bickering. We're going to talk about that shit. But now now it's the foursome that I was talking to you about, now we got four people uh, they are going after this stupid mirror. And yet you fled. Uh, cue flashback to prequel scene where the filmmakers cheat the audience and show that Chastain's character wasn't really killed at all. Thus hoping this reunion scene would have more impact, which it doesn't. Was anybody uh, surprised that she was alive? Uh, no. It, again, no. it was like, it was yeah, like what was it? It was exactly like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yep. I have to tell you Ooh. that I was surprised because I was fooled. I'll admit it. Because right. I was expecting that Snow White was going to show up. Oh, like, that's oh, true. We are still expecting. Be... Yeah, yeah. Kristen Stewart's a show, but now she does not. Uh, right. That's a good point. All right. That's a, that's a valid point. All right, Don. Wait, that's wait. why I got fooled. She <laughs> she, <laughs> she put me in a dungeon for seven years, uh, yet she still looks exactly the same when we last saw her. I'm right? guessing Chastain mm-hmm. insisted on all of her scenes being shot together so she can quickly escape the production. 45-minute mark. If you're in a dungeon for seven years, you're not going to look like that. She, she literally. She <laughs> She got more braids. Yeah, it was a <laughs> spa dungeon. She literally it was a spa dungeon. <laughs> it is. Oh like, yeah, you get facial oh, they're massage very hot right now. The spa yeah, dungeon. They, they got. They, they had people. They braided each other's hair. They didn't have a lot to do there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she showed up like she just walked right out of the makeup trailer. She looks great. And let me tell you, if you've been in a dungeon for seven years, you're not, I wish she had like a 
like a beard. Like she looked like was like like one of the one of the extras from Pirates of the Caribbean with the long fucked up hair and the made, or like made a body. Tracy Ullman from like <laughs> or a- a- Amy Sedaris. Yeah. What's her name? Jerry Blank. Yeah, she definitely should have looked. Yes. That would have been. A, then he would have been like, Ooh. Jerry Blank is my hero. Uh, I don't like her. I don't like her one bit. Uh, this faux dwarf would make for a great cinematic flusher. So apparently Nick Frost is uh, <laughs> yeah. lamenting on how he does not like uh, Jessica Chastain. But none of us do because her acts. Every time she opens her mouth, I'm I'm dying of laughter. Oh my god! Every time she opens her mouth, I'm like. Uh, the Academy is, like, questioning you again. Oh, every time she opens her mouth, I'm like, can I get another Smittix and order a waffle fries? <laughs> like, like, I, just, I don't, just, I don't she's understand. Like, she works at Tilted di- Kilt. Her dialect coach should be sued. Hey, really, it's just a, uh, really, I just talk in your normal voice at that point, because she is a talented she's actress. She's so talented. She's like, she should be appearing in, like, the Boondock so Saints sequel. Uh, we talked about that. Oh, yeah, yeah actually, no yeah, shit. that's actually perfect. Yeah. Uh, catch of the day, catch of the day. Uh, cue two annoying female dwarves to go with the two annoying male dwarves around the 51 minute mark. Uh, seems like Nick Frost was right. They are kind of horrifying. Uh, you, you guys like the lady oh, dwarf. I, I, I'm just, just, no, it's, I it's, like them. Wow. Just, you guys just are, let them be happy. I, mean, <laughs> I thought they were cute. <laughs> so anyway, they get trapped in a, in a netting by the female dwarves. And one of them, they're, they're actually a little bit more cuter than the two male dwarves. I, I, will, get, I will cite you A that. little bit more cuter, more cute. Well, little, well, I've been I drinking. I think their so. costumes were better done for sure. I agree with that. The, yeah. I agree. Not, not the blonde one, the other one. The spunky one, the male, the I, male to do I, one. Uh, she I was, liked them both, but oh, uh, right. for different reasons. But right. I agree. I like the... Yeah, I like spunky the one's cuter. The costume is a little yeah. tilted one, the best. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. All right, I'll, I'll, the other one looked a little too like it, the costume. It wasn't really fitting well. I don't think it might have been one size too large. I think for she for, had a bad wig. That was the problem. That was the other. So. Well, there we go again, guys. Donna, <laughs> it's every, yeah. the wig budget. It I'm so sick of this guy. Wig, every wig I don't understand. Like low budget films, we get shitty wigs, and then big budget films. There's no excuse to have a shitty. Yeah, wig. no, excuse. none. And, the, and when you have the 150 million dollars, guys, and yeah. even t- bring your own wig, ladies. Yeah. If they're not gonna pay for it. Seriously, right. Bring you your girls own. have the money. Uh, goblins is real, uh, which come, which should come as no surprise uh, to Thor and Chastain since they live in a fantasy world where chicks create ice walls and dwarves run around fucking other dwarves. And then they start, yeah, I don't understand why they're questioning about the existence of goblins when they live yeah. in a fantasy world. There's fairies and all this other dumb shit running around. It was, <laughs> I was going to say, it was also later in the film, but one of them says something about uh, Cupid. And oh, I'm really? like, because they have Greek mythology in your fantasy world. Like, well, what? yeah. Or Roman yeah. mythology. Yeah, we're from. What? So confusing. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Pol- yeah. the Amazons to show up. I can, I can tell Polton's eyes are spinning at this point because she's probably so lost oh in the mythology. I know, I know. And Bear- there's goblins. Yeah. They're not real. Goblins <laughs> no, they're not real in this world. <laughs> yeah, we got fairies <laughs> and polar bears that can talk and walk and all this other shit. But we get yeah, goblins, no way. I don't understand. Goblins, that yeah. Yeah, why would you even question that? It's a, f- oh, God, this is crazy. Like dwarves, do you? Was anyone else hoping Thor would uh, get to use his hammer on one of those female dwarves? And uh, by hammer, I mean penis. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't, uh, well, no, I, I, no. Well, well, because, no, I say that. That's just, that's no. just you. <laughs> well, yes, it is just me. But I'm also saying that only because that female dwarf, the one in the kilt, was kind of hitting on Thor. And that would have been kind of cool if he was, like, jackhammering her. Uh, in, in, in a later scene. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah. what, what your Pornhub search for you is not our business. This is a no, sim- he's quoting um, Dr. Horrible. Oh, is that Dr. what I'm doing? Horrible okay, all right, yeah. Uh, doing. All right, so I'm, yeah, there's, however I can get away with that joke, I'm going to take it. Uh, <laughs> That's Nathan Fillion hey the hammer is my penis. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, I wasn't too far off on that. Uh, she sounds far too clever to waste her time with you. Thor and Chastain keep bickering through the mid, this midsection of this turd like a lame fantasy version of Sam and Diane. Uh, that's a deep cut. I'm not going to even explain no, that. It, okay, it everybody totally got that is. one? All right, everybody totally got that is. one. I'm not even going to tell you what show it is, folks. you got to Google that shit. Uh, but it's accurate. <laughs> and Polton doesn't even know what the hell I'm talking about right now. She's like, Sam and Diane? Who the fuck are these two? Uh-huh. Yeah, see, exactly. Well, it's yeah. where so. everybody knows your name. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this blood smells like tar. Uh, black tar heroin, actually. So in case you're wondering, the goblins have uh, black tar for blood and uh they're mm-hmm. on the trail of the goblins who have the mirror now the mirror moved they find it guys uh but in the goblin uh section which is a really uh, we'll talk about this the mirror move uh while i take on this cgi goblin that keeps leaping around like a cgi monkey from one of the planet of the apes remakes the hour wind minute mark how do you fuck up a goblin that is not how that's not a goblin guys that's a that's a that's a redressed monkey or an ape, or is it? Am I wrong on this? I don't think I'm wrong on this. I've seen a lot of films I, I don't with goblins. Think we're supposed to care enough. To no, no, it. no. Yeah, it's a fantasy. <laughs> no, I, how can you not analyze this? He's leaping around like Andy Circus. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> with apologies uh, to Andy Circus. Precious does not appreciate that. <laughs> 
<laughs> he is not a goblin. This is, uh, uh, Paul, did you realize that was a goblin? No. I did think it was a weird sure. looking, just <laughs> kind of weird looking for a goblin. Yeah, I, didn't but... know I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you can Paul... look in the D&D manual and find out what A it goblin is, looks but, like. It doesn't know, look like I that. Like, I think I dated him. <laughs> <laughs> Leaping around like a monkey with the gold horns. Yeah. So anyway. He a... had some awesome bling though. So there's a goblin that's six foot. This is not what. If you want to see a goblin, a more appropriate what a goblin should look like, watch uh, the 1985 film Legend with Tom Cruise. There's a goblin in there. Looks uh, oh, and I forget the woman no. who played her. Yes. Never watch a Tom Cruise movie, no. kids. Never. No, 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 no. That's a great. That's a great goblin in that one. And it's a woman that played that. Uh, Alice Platon, I believe, is her name, and uh, did a brilliant job with that goblin. That's what a goblin looks like. Not this fucking shit you're seeing here. Uh, or Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you yeah. Can just, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I went. I went. Like, a de- I went a deep cut. Free movie. Why? Well, yeah. Well, I had to go a deep cut with the legend because that's what a more traditional goblin, I guess, D and D goblin looks like. And Lord of the Rings, it, it's somewhat traditional. A little, a uh, little bit more Peter Jackson. But you get the idea. But anyway, those oh, those two folks. I know we're the getting ones too. in Labyrinth are <laughs> Goblin-y too. Oh, that's right. Uh, Paul, I'm sorry. We're getting too nerd deep. Uh, Paul, exactly. Are, yeah. that, I, I was like, why didn't you say Labyrinth? Yeah, we can do. All right, we can. All right, guys, just fill fill in what a goblin you think you could look. At. It doesn't look like this one Nerd. here. Is my no. point. Nerd. Oh. All, right, all right, thank you, Paul. Um, I, I know I'm a nerd. I, I take that as a compliment. She she does. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Paul, Paul's we're getting... on a podcast right now on a Friday. Night. I know. I so, I'm a nerd. Yeah, so we're super cool. nerd. <laughs> 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 I've uh, never taken it off. I wish the hell Thor would take off something to make this more enjoyable. I haven't seen this much leather in a film since yeah. Danny Trejo. Okay, Jeez. I have to agree with you, and I will tell you I have a specific Uh-oh. note to this effect. There we go. And I said, I was thinking I could watch anything with Chris Hemsworth <laughs> in it for two hours. Right. But at the 45-minute mark, I was wondering if I can't just go watch Avengers again. Would that be acceptable? <laughs> 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 so I could take off his shirt. Yeah, he's a, he's completely clothed. I'm really surprised, except for that hot tub thing. But you don't see his uh, that those chiseled abs. You don't so, see his willy. <laughs> yeah, you don't see his willy. I work out and not just show get the up impl- this is I don't cool. understand why he wasn't topless in this. I really don't. I'm not that I'm so, not. I'm calling my senator. Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Hemsworth did to be topless in every movie. Is that too much to I'm ask? Be like, listen, Mark yeah, Warner. The implication is <laughs> not. Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think it's too much. I think he was topless in Ghostbusters that remake. I think he was topless in that too. I don't understand why he couldn't be topless in this. I don't know. I just I don't like know. a movie where he's wearing fake glasses and admits they're fake glasses. Well, there's that too. That's cute. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, they get the mirror back from the uh, uh, goblin. Well, they get the yeah, they they get it, but they're fighting off goblins. Take the mirror to the sanctuary while I stay here and fight off these CGI monkey goblins one by one. Sure, we don't really believe that. The hour four minute mark, but uh, they do that. They get across the bridge, um, and as a result, he's alone with all the goblins. And she takes she's a bow and arrow expert. We should have mentioned that earlier. He's good with axe, hand axes. Don't don't even ask this stuff. Anyway, she shoots an arrow across and uh, kills all the goblins in one shot and blows them all up because you need good explosions in your movie. Uh, you do. Don't you miss? I never miss. Uh, well, you certainly miss one of those few. Uh, oh shit! Uh, so before she shoots all the goblins up in blue fire, she says, uh, "Nick Frost says, don't you miss?" And she says, "I never miss. I can't even do her accent." Uh, well, you certainly missed a few of those dialect I, lessons. No, uh, I never miss. I, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, uh, it's it's every, just every so time embarrassing. I watch this, I pre- like I appreciate yelling at <laughs> the screen with how bad her accent. Uh, is. So anyway, they both survive and everybody gets away. I choose you for me, not you. And I choose this horrible Simpsons Irish accent. Okay, we're going to blame the Simpsons. Yeah, I, I um, choose you for Alina. So in case you're wondering, folks, there's Jessica Chastain side booming around the uh, alert, I should say, around the hour and ten minute mark. At least uh, when she was kissing Thor, I can imagine myself kissing Thor. Hey-oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Everybody, everybody, all you ladies remember that? Yeah. And some of us guys, <laughs> oh, too. Yeah. I know. No shame in that. All right, at least we got something. I had to get something out of this movie. And if, uh, yeah, if, if, it's, right. if it's me kissing Thor in my dreams, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not um, proud. I just want to point out, because my show is Varmints, yes. that there is an adorable hedgehog at 1 hour, 11 yes. minutes, and 36 right. yeah. seconds in. You're right. And he has little butterflies all over his tiny body, and he is yes. so cute. There was a CGI hedgehog that had the, the tiny uh, butterflies on it. The hedgehog was the yeah. best thing about the whole movie. <laughs> yes. well, I love just... that. Hedgehog. Yeah, but and Donna, I actually a... rewound the film to watch Aww. the hedgehog like three or four times. Yeah, Donna's so. pretty adorable, but there was a snake that had flowers on him too, and I thought that or grass that on him. I thought that was cute, cute too. That I thought that was okay. But all right, and the guy... tortoise. That was a snake awesome. in the yeah, grass. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Oh, but I'm bummed. Hey, but guys, how shitty is this film? 
that you're you're focusing on the CGI animals and you just don't care about anything else. You're like, okay, the snake's honestly, cute, the turtle's cute, and the hedgehog's no, awesome. No, I'm, I'm still <laughs> focused on the accents. Okay, well, I, well, yeah. I'm, I wish the hedgehog talked in an <laughs> Irish accent. I didn't apologize for it. <laughs> <laughs> All I had to do is lend her to you, uh, and you let her straight into the mirror. So uh, pathetic. Uh, this is what happens when Thor thinks only with his hammer, and by hammer I mean penis. I want 14 minute mark. So as a result of them, they do it. And the next morning, of course, uh, it turns out Jessica Chastain was still working for the ice queen and they show up to claim the mirror. Uh, and it's not a pretty scene. Uh, these dwarves, they're just like children. Uh, the ice queen will make for a great cinematic flusher. Yeah. Uh, uh, geez. Uh, slow burn on that one. Uh, she never misses. So anyway, as a result, she, the ice queen takes the mirror. She tells Jessica Chastain to kill Thor. And she seemingly does. She shoots an arrow straight into his chest. But which, and I'm going to call bullshit on this. I'm going to get a little David Caruso on this one. Uh, she never misses, unless it has to do with a convincing accent. Uh, surprise to no one. Oh, Chastain boy. really doesn't kill Thor around the hour and 17 minute mark. Unfortunately for Hemsworth, he's going to have to stick around to the end of the running time. Uh, yeah, she shoots a sh- arrow in his chest and hits a, uh, a little medallion that she, uh, he gave, she gave him uh, when they were doing it in the hot spring, which we, we could have seen more of that. Um, and as a result, that saved his life. And that's complete well, it bullshit. Well, was the medallion when they first saw each other. She tucked <laughs> it under her shirt. Right. It's complete bullshit, guys. Uh, he went when they were that. kids. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So that's, that's, a, that's a through line with that. And it, it saves his life, uh, which I call bullshit. That would have not happened that way. But all right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? We only had to wait an hour and 20 minutes into this running time to finally hear this classic line. Deliver with such flatness by Blunt that it'll only inspire you to turn off this turd and go watch the animated Snow White instead. Um, awesome. <laughs> hmm. I feel like her character really does not care about the mirror. No. She's just like, I care that my sister is out of my life. Yeah. And here we go. As a result, she yeah. gets the mirror back to her uh, Ice Queen palace. And um, do not back away from me in case you're wondering what happened to Charlize Theron, folks, from the beginning of this shithole. Uh, she now pours out of the mirror and shows up with gold flecks on her forehead like the mirror just blew a load into her face. Uh, why is she back? <laughs> mm. uh, uh, we have much to do, little sister. Uh, we just have to wait until this lithium wears off so I can get these line readings down more convincingly. Uh, Theron is not even in this movie at this point. She comes back and she's wearing some fucked up outfit. Uh, to begin with, after she got this gold shit on her forehead, which looks terrible, guys. Uh, and again, another groovy-ass crown and some weird... And she's going to change costumes three times within two minutes. I should mention that. This is the mm-hmm. first costume because I guess the costume designer had too much on the rack. And they had to get it all in the movie. Instead of spending more time on the wigs, you know, why yeah. don't you spend less no, time on the costumes? Real Housewives of X-Men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I'm not gonna lie. I liked her looks. I'm not, really? I'm not oh, I'm a garbage well, person. I liked her I looks. Loved it. I bought the Jador perfume. I was like, yeah. Jador. <laughs> I started spraying Jador on me, and, and I, black blood I bet just you started did. oozing out of my mouth. It was really <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> Snow White shall kneel before me. Uh, not in this turd, she won't. She's too busy giving blowjobs to the director of that other Snow White film. Hey-o. So with, with no hey, apologies. he was going down on her. No, actually, that was, yeah, that was what was amazing. Oh, was that he what? was the one going really? out, like to yeah. count on her. Ew! Yeah. All right, I want to pick. I don't even want to. Oh, yeah. that really? That's what a classy in her, asshole. No, in her mini coop. This guy was married. That's all right. Now I gross myself out. All right, let's. Uh, oh, God, I'm gonna keep moving. <laughs> Hello, Eric. I missed you. Uh, we, however, can barely remember the climax to this previously fi- this previous film much less care about the reunion here, hour 20 and a minute mark. So uh, the plan is they have to go in and destroy the mirror and they don't know the um, that Charlie Theron is alive. And so basically it's, it's Chris Hemsworth and the one dwarf, because uh, two dwarves get frozen, Nick Frost and, and the, the the blonde dwarf get frozen and taken to the castle. Up together, right. yeah. So it's up to Chris Hemsworth, it's up to Thor and the other two dwarves to go in and save the day. Uh, that's how. So anyway, Thor's coming in from the outside. They infiltrate it from the inside. Whew, Jesus Christ. Th- Theron keeps changing her costumes every two minutes to the back end of turd like she's appearing in a Radio City Music Hall Christmas Spectacular. Uh, you get the gold one, a black outfit, and then another gold one. Uh, apparently pulling in no problem in any of these looks. Um, I haven't seen this many ridiculous costumes since Flash Gordon. Again, deep cut from 1980. Or maybe the forthcoming oh. um, Thor Ragnarok, folks. This, may be, this might all be from the same costume truck. Uh, when that opens tomorrow, good luck with that. That's your tie-in, folks, in case you're wondering why we're doing this Thor film. is because there's another Thor film opening tomorrow. Uh, we climb. Uh, so, she, so anyway, all hell breaks loose, and the two sisters start bitch-slapping each other. And as a result, Freya 
uh, creates an ice wall straight up in the to separate the huntsmen who they got Thor managed to get all on their side to fight uh, the Charlie Theron character. Stay with us. We climb a sheer ice wall with uh, hand axes. Sure. Hour and 35 minute mark. You know how hard it is to climb an ice wall? Anybody? No? Okay. No, I've never climbed an ice wall. No, but it's like they've been trained to do this. Uh, Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I am but a reflection, and you have already decided. Uh, Surprised to know when the Theron was responsible for the death of Blunt's kid. Yawn. Anybody not figure out that? (laughs) It's like, exactly. Eh. I did uh, like in the fight scene with the ladies, though, the one CGI effect where Charlize Theron turns into a flock of golden birds. I kind of okay. dug that. I all thought right, that was right. in a better movie. That would have been a hit. That's why I'm stronger than you. Uh, hey, don't worry about scaling the ice wall. We're just going to knock it down in a few moments. Our bad. Sorry about that. Uh, so anyway, the ice wall gets oh, come. Oh, they climb up and they, they again, you guys would have been crushed <laughs> to death and killed. But all right, we're going to let all of that slide just to get into the shithole. Right. Uh, did you not think I wanted a child? Um, someone get Theron a napkin. She's got black jizz dripping out of her mouth like a rabid meth addict around the hour and 39 minute mark. That looked terrible. I don't understand that really why that did thought... look pretty bad. It was like, wow. Oh, man. No, she, was, she was like zombie queen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't make any sense. Well, it does because she's part of the mirror now, folks. We should mention that. And she's part of the black goo in the mirror. I don't like, well, I guess it doesn't really make sense. Anyway, she starts. I didn't get any of the black goo. Oh, you she didn't get any of that? Slender Man. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, even if it doesn't make any Anyway, she's spitting that shit out and it looks it's fucking. And it's a low angle shot again where she's looking crazy. Um, anyway, you can check that out. She just looks like, yeah, like a meth head. Like somebody that just really hasn't taken care <laughs> no, of No, really, yeah, no. She like, looks, ever. Yeah, no. So anyway, yeah. they have a big fight battle, and Hemsworth finally mans up. I don't, Hemsworth would have been killed instantly, but somehow he manages to kill her. Well, he throws an axe at the mirror, and that shatters the mirror, and of course finally destroys, uh, this, uh, this woman, and that's the end of that. Uh, but even buried under ice and snow, love survives. This unnecessary narration brought to you by the narration Well, and, guys. uh, Emily Blunt's character, like, kind of, like, <sighs> Try to help them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She yeah. She helps out the end for all your uh, narrating needs. Narration guy. That guy. She just sounds like the exact guy from Beauty and the Beast, the animated film, which is I know was yeah. David Agnes Styers, but here it's some other asshole. Uh, some fairy tales come true, but some never end. Thankfully, this film finally ends with uh, some crappy Bjork style tune over the closing credits. I'll just register my one complaint that I'm really tired of R and B music and fantasy films. Thank I'm you. Just done. All right, there you go. All Please right, stop Donna. doing that. <laughs> There's Donna's bullet point on that. Yeah, to, it song is terrible, and it really doesn't fit in with the rest of the movie, I don't think. And you're right about that. It belongs in another film. I kind of, I didn't dislike the song. I, I thought the song was cool. I just want there to be more, I want my fantasy film music to be more Anya. More, more, more Viking, bag, more Anya, Celtic, Anya? more, more uh, bagpipes and more shit. fantasy. More fantasy. Yeah, I love- well, you can, no, it's Skyrim. You can watch uh, Outlander then, Donna. I guess if you want bagpipes and uh, hey, I, um, don't bring Outlander. No. <laughs> like, well, I was I trying to. Like, well, I think what about like Will Smith did a rap about Snow White? <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I want to well, bring that yeah. back. All right, so there you go, folks. That is a uh, holy shit. That is uh, the Huntsman Winter's War for this edition of uh, <laughs> Resident Evil. We took it out and played with it a lot longer. Should have could we flush it, ladies? Could we please, please flush it? Yes. Flush it with that bad accent. <laughs> Hedgehog, don't flush the hedgehog. Uh, you know, yeah, don't flush the hedgehog. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. consider it consider yeah. flush. Whew, holy cow. There you go. I want to thank my lovely co cinematic flushers, Midwest Movie Mogul, Colleen Griffin, and Sassy Cinephile Sarah Paul. Great job, ladies, as always. Thank our very special guest, Donnelly Hume from the Varmints yes. Podcast and her other podcast. Donnie, want to pimp that one out because I totally fucked it up at the beginning. Oh, you didn't know about it. It's this. this oh, Opie I did. Adams, I just didn't it. It's opiumadams.podbean.com. Yeah. It's cool. All right, so there you go. You can check out both shows uh, from Miss Donnelly Hume. Thank you very much, Donna. We really appreciate you joining us. Hope you will come back and join us again. And we're going to be back next... Oh, I'll take that as a yes. And <laughs> we're going to be back next week to... Uh, and we're going to be back next week with the... Uh, yeah, shit. Well, thank, well, thank you, Donna. <laughs> I hope you... Uh, thank you uh, for having me. Yeah, it's really uh, fun. All right. I totally blew that whole ending. Of that. All right, we're going to be back next week to flush you. Uh, God damn it, the flush... That's what happens when I start drinking at 5 in the afternoon. We're going to be back next week to flush yet another cinematic turd. That's what I was trying to chunk out of my mouth. Until then, uh, say goodbye, ladies. Bye, ladies. Hi. Bye. Hi. Hi. This is Nora Crest, and I want to thank you for listening this week and every week as we flush these turds down our cinematic bowl here in the restroom. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play Music so we attract more listeners and you don't miss a single episode. 
We love feedback, so email us at signalsoffury at gmail.com with your comments and suggestions for future flushes. Also, be sure to check out our home restroom on the net, signalsoffury.com. Until next time, remember, we're here to flush it so you don't have to see it. I'm Nora Crest, and this has been the award-winning Soiled Restroom Cinema. <laughs>